sports fans and football fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and if you've been following the USFL, and I have been, you know that the season is now over. Now, last week in my recap and preview of games and picks video for week 10, I uh, explained that the playoffs had already been set at that time, and of course that hasn't changed. The playoffs are still going to be, uh, for the North Division, it's going to be the Stars versus the Generals, and in the South it's going to be the Stallions uh, versus the Breakers. That has not changed at all, um, even though the Breakers did lose. So, um, what we have now, though, is we're going to talk about my record this year, because that's important to me. Maybe not any of you guys, but it is to me. And then we're going to take a little look at the standings, and we're going to look at um, some of the, you know, the matchups for the playoffs. And I am going to give you my predictions for the entirety of the playoffs. So, the first thing to discuss is that in week 10, I was 3-1. and one. I missed the Panthers game, I thought, based on the week before when the Maulers played quite well against the Stars, that there was no way they were going to lose to the Panthers, the hapless Panthers. But the Panthers dominated them pretty much. I mean, you know, the final score was something like 33-21 or something like that. What was it? Yes, exactly. That was it was 33-21. But I was three and one overall this week. And that brings my USFL 10 week record to let me get rid of that. That brings my USFL 10 week pick record to a uh, a stunning 23 and 17 which is 57.5% of the games correct. Would have been 60, as I said last week. I would have been 60 if I'd gone 4-0, if I'd gotten the Panthers game right. But that didn't happen. So we, uh, we finished at 57.5%. I guess that's good for taking a team of, uh, a league of eight teams, throwing them together, putting a whole bunch of different guys who didn't make rosters and were only briefly on rosters all together on various teams and playing them against each other. Uh, hopefully my NFL picks, which are coming in the fall, so be ready for that. Hopefully my NFL picks will be better. So just to recap the standings here, you've got the North, the Generals 9-1, and one, the Stars 6-4. and four. The Stars lost to the Generals in the last game of the regular season, and then they'll play again in the uh, North Championship. And then you got the Panthers at 2-8, and eight, having beaten the Maulers twice. And that was their two wins. And then you got the Maulers picking up the rear at 1-9. and nine. Then you got, in the south, the Stallions at 9-1. and one. The Breakers at 6-4. and four. The Bandits at 4-6. and six. And the Gamblers at 3-7. and seven. The Gamblers, I called it, beat the Breakers in the last game of the season. Although... The Breakers were not playing their um, their starting uh, quarterback um, offhand. I forget his name, but anyway. Um, but let's go take a look at some stats. So here are the player stats. The league, I guess, the league leaders. Um, you've got Jordan Tamu of um, Tampa Bay, who passed for 2,015 yards. Uh, passing touchdowns, Tamu also for 14. Rushing yards was Jordan Ellis of New Orleans with 596. Rushing touchdowns was Darius Victor of New Jersey with 9. Uh, receiving yards, 540 for Cavante Turpin of New Jersey. Receiving touchdowns was 5 for Isaiah Zuber of Houston. Kicking points, you got Brandon Aubrey of Birmingham with 76 points. Kick return yards, Maurice Alexander with 787 yards for Philadelphia. Punt return yards, Rashad Davis of Tampa Bay, 224. Interceptions, Channing Stribling of Philadelphia with 7. Total tackles, Donald Payne, 117. 
sacks. Chris Odom of Houston, 12.5. Jordan Tamu for points, 90. All-purpose yards, Victor Bolden Jr., 1,209 yards. Kickoff touchbacks, Ra Ramiz Ahmed with 17. Uh, punt net average, 41.1 for with uh, Brandon Wright of Tampa Bay. Now the team statistics, passing yards per game allowed the Panthers 191.4, yet they were to an eight. Uh, rushing yards per game, the Generals 160.6. Uh, Kicking points, the Gamblers 74. Kick return average 27.8 for the Stars. Punt return average 15.3 for the Generals. Points allowed 148 for the Breakers. So the Breakers are going to have a good defense going into that uh, big game next week. Uh, third down percentage, the Generals at 43.4. Now you're noticing the Generals are all over this. There's the Stars, but there's the Generals, the Generals, the Generals. Um, yards per game, the Generals 349.4. Turnovers, the Stars 8. And uh, kickoff touchback percentage, 26.2 for the Stallions. And net punt average, 41.1 for the Bandits. So let's take a closer look at the teams that will be involved this weekend. Uh, the first we're going to look at is the Birmingham Stallions. And uh, let's go to their roster. And you got Victor Bolden Jr., he, as we said, 415 yards uh, receiving on 42 receptions with one touchdown. And let's go back and take a look at... Um, now they have... You know, the Stallions, the thing that they have is at quarterback, they are, they've got two uh, potential guys. And one of them is Alex Magoo. And we'll take a look at him. 460 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions. And he is one of their quarterbacks. But they also have, where is that? I hope I didn't miss it. And then their other quarterback is Jamar Smith. And Jamar Smith has 1,573 yards uh, passing. Ten touchdowns against six interceptions. Not the greatest ratio. So... Um, you know, that's what you've got for the, for the Stallions. But let's take a look at the, um, at the, their opponent, the New Orleans Breakers. So with the Breakers, you've got, um, let's take a look at the roster. And let's go to their starting quarterback because he was the starting quarterback, even though he didn't pass for the most yards or most touchdowns, was um, supposed to supposed to be all USFL. He got U, all USFL honors. There he is, Kyle Sloter. So Kyle Sloter on the year passed for 1,798 yards, nine touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. Really, I don't know why he got all USFL at quarterback over um, Tamu of Tampa Bay, but. He did. Um, so there, there's that, and they've got so they've got Sloter there. Take a look at some of their. Now one of their quarterbacks is uh, Shea Patterson, who uh, was started the year on the um, Michigan Panthers, and is now on New Orleans. He passed for 1,009 yards, four touchdowns, and five interceptions. Hopefully, I mean. Uh, New Orleans is hoping it doesn't come down to putting Shea Patterson in the game. Let's just put it that way. Um, so, uh, let's go on. Take a look at the New Jersey Generals. Now, the New Jersey Generals, 9-1 and one in the uh, North. They won the North while well, they were on top of the North. They won't win the North unless they win against um, Philadelphia. So let's take a look at their roster. Uh, you can see Kelvin Ashley is going to be doubtful for the game coming up this weekend. 
Uh, one of their quarterbacks is DeAndre Johnson. He passed for 772 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. And the other quarterback. So looking at the Generals and their other quarterback is Luis Perez. And they bring him up. And he had 1,200 yards on the season, nine touchdowns, and one interception. So that's not bad. A nine-to-one ratio. So uh, let's go back and take a look at their opponent, which would be the Stars. We go to teams. We go down to the Philadelphia Stars. And uh, they were six. We see that they were six and four, but they had both, I think, Two of their four losses were to the Generals, I believe. So, let's take a look at their roster. And uh, let's go take a look at their quarterback. I think they have a... Well, they, Case Cookus is their starter. Oh, I, I, I expect him to be their starter. 1,334 yards, 12 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. And uh, his coach actually gave him a pretty high compliment, said that he could be um, an NFL backup quarterback. So let's take a look at their other quarter. Well, that's, I don't know that guy, but I thought there was another quarterback that they played uh, quite a bit. Brian Scott. Yeah, they did play Brian Scott a little bit. We'll take a look at him. 558 yards, five touchdowns, two interceptions. He's probably the Stars' backup quarterback. And so you're seeing a common theme here. The teams with two two competent quarterbacks are uh, generally pretty good. So that was my look at the teams. And uh, let's go back to the USFL. And uh, what I am going to say is, I'm going to go ahead and say that um, in the North, I'm going to take the Generals to win. I know that the Stars have lost to them twice, and it's hard to beat a team three times in a season. I, a friend of mine told me that one time. He was talking about, you know, how in the NFL you play every team in your division uh, twice during the season, and then sometimes you might meet them in the playoffs. And that it's extremely difficult to beat a team three times because they know you, they know you inside and out, and they know what to expect. But that having been said, I think the Generals are just that much better, and I'm going to take the Generals. Now, the easy pick in the South is the Stallions, and again, the the Breakers have four losses, and two of the four losses are to the Stallions. And the easy pick is the Stallions, and that's what I'm going to go with, too. I, you know, last week I was leaning Breakers. But now, not so much. I'm not. I, I saw the Breakers play last night, and I know that they didn't have uh, Sloter at quarterback, and uh, that accounted for quite a bit. But still, uh, they they just didn't. I'm mean, defensively, they're very good. They are very good defensively. But I think the Stallions can throw enough looks at them, enough offense at them to uh, to uh, exploit. Um, whatever minor weaknesses might appear in that Breakers defense. So I am going to go with the Stallions. So that leaves it as the Stallions playing the Generals in the uh, USFL Championship game. And I would, I'm going to pick the Generals. In a match, in that matchup, I would pick the Generals to win the game. So um, even though the well, the Generals' only loss is to the Stallions. The Stallions' loss is to, like, Tampa Bay, I think. But um, the Generals' only loss is to the Stallions in Week 1. But it was a very close game. And uh, I, I still think that the Generals are just too well-rounded. They have two competent quarterbacks. They just, I think, they're going to they're, they're gonna overmatch the Stars, I think. They'll beat the Stars. And I think they could beat the Stallions. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below who you think the matchups um, are, who you think the USFL championship matchup is going to be um, based on who you think will win each championship game. Which, by the way, all those games will be in Canton, Ohio. So, um, 
we'll see about that and be on the lookout i will have a usfl video coming out about the three things i think the usfl needs to do this usfl needs to do to survive so you want to be on the lookout for that i don't know exactly what day it could change depending on uh, other video scheduling that i do but it should be coming out very soon otherwise that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.